Well, good morning, everybody. Why don't you look at somebody, tell them Merry Christmas. Hope you are uh, enjoying your season so far. We've been praying for you all week that joy uh, would be a part, not just of uh, a Christmas song for you, but would be uh, this season, that he would just fill you with himself, would fill you uh, with joy. Uh, last week, that's what we talked about as we are building our playlist for Christmas, but not just building a playlist for Christmas, but one for life. Uh, through Christmas carols and Christmas songs, uh, a lot of them, not all of them, uh, but they, so many have these truths in it that God wants us to get. So many of them were written, written um, from God's word. Uh, at our house, Christmas music starts around October-ish. Uh, it's not even, the weather's not even cool yet, but we got Christmas song playing. I don't know how early it starts uh, at your house. It, we had a, some tension in our house. Anybody ever, any Christians in the room ever have tension in your house? No, not at all. Okay, so we're the only ones, but uh, but we have some tension sometimes when it comes to decoration, what season it's appropriate to acknowledge and things like that. There was a little bit at our house this year, you would think after 20 years of marriage that uh, Amy would know that my way is the best, but she's still, uh, still having, you know, anybody else still working on your spouse. You're just, you know, oh, only three people are around. Okay, you're working. We know you are. Work in progress. But uh, we had this, this tension at our house of, when it was time to move the mums out, I, I'm a flower person and love landscaping and I love changing out the pots and the, the containers for the season. And the mums had not even bloomed. Like I buy them before they bloom so that they can help bring in the season. Any plant people with me? Yeah, whole three of you. Okay, so, but there is a thing about you don't just buy it, you know, when it's, when it's blooming because then it's gonna die the next week. And so there, there's this season. Well, they're not even bloomed out. And Amy's like, it's time to put the... Uh, I'm like, hang on a second. We, we, you know, y'all, have y'all seen the meme where the turkey is saying, hang on, fat guy, wait, wait your turn? You know, and it's, I kind of felt like at that at our house, it's like, it's not even time to move the mums out. And so I did before the mums had, the mums, the mums, the mums had bloomed, but uh, she did say it was, okay, okay, let's move them to the the pavilion to a different area of the house. And so it was still fall in that area of the yard while it was Christmas everywhere else because you can't mix the, the streams. I, I got to get rid of the ferns early too. And, and so that's a whole nother thing. And uh, we should do a marriage thing this, this year and talk about all the tensions that happen at our house. Maybe we can work through some things together. But, uh, but, but Christmas music, now while the decorations are not up, man, we start it early. And man, these things just bring back great memories and there's things that we recall. But what we're doing over the next few weeks is, is pulling these truths out of, out of Christmas that, that really, you know, Jesus got into our business at Christmas. That's the good news of what Christmas is all about. That, he, you know, uh, 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 Ellis just talked about it, Emmanuel, God with us. One of my favorite verses, uh, the message paraphrase says in John 1 that Jesus moved into the neighborhood. And in such a beautiful picture that, man, he didn't just send a message. He came and dwelt among us. And, and then he was only here, you know, for a short time. But he said it was better that he goes and sits at the right hand of God so that he could send his spirit and he could send his presence, which really means for us that Christmas and Easter, man, they live inside of us. That they are, they're not just an event or a date on the calendar, you know, when you're supposed to move stuff, decorations out and move decorations in, that our house, our heart is permanently decorated with, with Christmas because God got into our business. He sent Jesus. And, and the song that we're gonna use this week, you've probably already recognized it, but go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere that Jesus Christ is born. To go, to go tell it, what is your life telling? What mountain are you shouting from? Because all of us are telling a song, all of us are singing a song, all of us are telling something. And then all of us, it may look different in different seasons, but all of us have a mountain. We're shouting something from the mountain. And at Christmas, we were introduced to the greatest message, the greatest promise. Jesus was the fulfillment of all that God wanted for his people. And we get to celebrate that <clears throat> and acknowledge it. The song, Go Tell It on the Mountain, a little bit of history for you, um, was not originally a Christmas song. It was actually written in the 1800s and not written, it was orally uh, passed on. Uh, it was a, a Negro spiritual. 
And it was this song birthed in one of the darkest times in our nation, the darkest time in in all of humanity. It was this song birthed in the heart of people who were enslaved and oppressed. And and what would look like on the outside was the, was the, the bottom. But in their hearts, there were these songs that were released. And it was really important to them to pass these orally, not just to encourage themselves, but to pass them on from plantation to plantation, from state to state, from generation to generation. The song of the Lord was released through a group of people. And you and I today, every tribe, every tongue, and every race are singing, go tell it on the mountain because of the promise that God birthed in a group of people. It's very powerful. We're standing on the shoulders of of people who heard in a season where they could have kept their mouths shut, use the song of the Lord to declare, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Which tells us, even in Israel slavery, even in you look through history, even you look through spiritual slavery and how all of us have experienced these low places, that he is still king of the universe, that he is still king of kings and lord of lords, and that all of us, a song can be birthed. I want to encourage you today that no matter where you find yourself, God knows exactly where you are, and he has put a song in your heart and a song in your mouth, a song of praise unto our God. And and I want us to look today because before we can ever go tell it on the mountain, we need to hear the song of the Lord to us. We need to protect the song of the Lord in us because it's up for grabs sometimes in our lives. It can just feel like automatic that we should just know better. And sometimes we should, but we don't always use what he gave us to use. And so I kind of want to look at these three different areas and then we're going to get to the end is I just believe we're going to end in response time shouting the name of Jesus. Is that okay with y'all? Because I believe there's some areas in our lives we need to remind those areas. We don't need to remind the Lord. He already knows. He didn't forget. But we need to remind ourselves and we need to remind the Lord and we need to remind some of our situations that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus Christ is born and that changes everything. There is nothing off limits. There is nothing that he can't touch and change on the mountain, in the valleys, in every situation. Look at this passage in scripture. This was actually where we see this song. Um, It was uh, the, the heart of it was uh, written. Many uh, historians look back and they say, okay, this is where this song was conceived. It was actually published later on in the early 1900s by a guy named John Wesley Works. He was an African-American uh, college student, and there were a group of, uh, of writers and students who wanted to save the college. And so while all these Negro spirituals were orally passed on from generation to generation, he was the first person that put them all together in written form so that they could be passed to other generations. You and I today, miraculously, this song is being sung because of this one guy. And pretty cool, the college was saved as well. But he didn't think there was a lot of issues with with him publishing this at the time because you had people who were former slaves. You had people who had, 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 that was part of their history. And they looked back and they said, that reminds us of a dark time. But there were others that said that reminds us it was a dark time, but it reminds us of God's faithfulness to us that even in the darkest of times, he was a light in those times. They had a light in their hearts. And so they wanted to preserve it. And then others called them slave songs, but he called it God's song. He called it a song of the redeemed, a song of the Lord. Go tell it on the mountain. And it was written from this place. And he, he put it together in, a, uh, in a, a volume that was published. And you and I have it today because of that. It came from Isaiah 52, starting with verse 6. Isaiah was God's messenger and prophet to Israel in a time where they were enslaved, they were oppressed. And here's God's word to them. In verse 6, he says, Therefore my people shall know my name and what it means. Therefore, in that day, I am the one who is speaking. Here I am. What a bold statement from the Lord. Like before he says what he's about to say, he did not want them to think this was just some man giving a message. He wanted them to know that the Lord saw them where they were and that he himself was speaking to them. That they would know the power of his name. They would know that they belonged to him and wanted to know that he was the one, his name, he was going to be the fulfillment of everything that was about to come after that. Don't you just love the word of God? Like that is meaty. 
What I just shared, that, that, that just gives, the, the Bible has weight all by itself, but we just recognize the weight of what God, the message that he was about to give. He says, therefore in that day, I am the one speaking here, I am. How beautiful and delightful on the mountain are the feet of him who brings good news, who announces peace. Now you say, what does this have to do with his feet? How beautiful are the feet? It's not how beautiful are the feet. It's not talking about how good looking his feet are. Got good looking feet. They're covered up by shoes right now. At our house, they make fun of feet. You line up the family. You're just sitting there trying to watch TV. Got your feet up on the, on the something. What do you call that thing? The chase. Thank you. The coffee table. No, that, nah. <laughs> but up, up on, on the chase. And it's like, you're just trying to watch some TV together. Just hanging out, watching some TV. People want to start making fun of your feet. They call me Flintstone, Hobbit feet, all these weird things. It's not right. Anybody else receive persecution in your house? It's like dad, the role of dad says persecute me. It's the same thing. It's like, and, and, and that's what happens at our house. But this is not a feet conversation. He's saying how precious and how beautiful are the feet of the one who carries. That there was a message that, this, that these feet were bringing not just sending, there was a message that that person was carrying in themselves. Come on, I'm going somewhere this, where this, with this, I promise. So he says, who announces peace, who brings good news of good things, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. They will see face to face the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth, shout joyfully together, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed, which means to buy back. He says, I have bought back Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm, his infinite power before the eyes of all the nations, revealing himself as the one by whom Israel is redeemed from captivity. That all the ends of the earth may see the salvation of the Lord. Now here, I want you to see the significance of this. This was a prophetic word for that day, but it's a prophetic word for our day. There was a song being released about a messenger who would come over the mountain. And then he describes what, what the Lord wanted, wanted the people to see is this picture of watchmen on a wall. You think about a castle or, or a fortress and on the top it would be surrounded by walls and in on that wall it would be enough room for people to, to hang out and they were, they were the ones looking for help. They were looking for peace. They were looking for a messenger to bring a message of hope and redemption. And he says, in that day, the Lord, he would prove his name. He would prove his faithfulness by sending a messenger who would bring a song of the redeemed. He would bring a message of hope. He would bring the good news, which we know as the gospel. And he would come over the mountain. And he says, they didn't, the, 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 the messenger didn't even have to get to the fortress that the watchman would see the look in his eyes would see the look on his face and they would erupt in joy they would erupt in celebration because the Lord had come to not just give them a message but he was the message are you with me this is good news because this wasn't just a message 600 years before Jesus. Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise to show his name, to reveal himself to people. And you and I are those watchmen waiting on the wall. We may have not have worded it this way and eloquently, but I want you to think about the place you were when you were looking for hope and hope showed up. Were the one, it didn't say there were many, there, were, there are not many answers. There is one way, one truth, and one life who comes riding over our mountain. What mountain did he conquer? He conquered sin. He conquered sickness. He conquered disease. He conquered selfishness. He conquered everything that stood between you and I, this mountain and this vast gap. And it says that when the, the watchmen saw, and here's what I love about this, he didn't just do it from a distance. It says that the watchmen would experience their redemption face to face. Wow, that's beautiful. It wasn't just something, Christmas isn't about him sending a message. Christmas, Christmas is about him sending a messenger. One who showed up in our midst. One who, who came to be intimately acquainted with not just this life, but intimately acquainted with you and I. 
And my prayer today is that all of us leave here and go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, that Jesus is born, that that's a part of our playlist in our life, not just our Christmas season, but that it's something that we recognize and make a place for. And I want to give you a few ways that, that I believe God wants us to do that. The first thing is you've got to receive God's song in you. You can't tell about something you don't know. You can talk about it. You can share what other people have said. But, but God has no grandkids. God wants kids. God wants an intimate personal relationship with all of us. It's a face-to-face -face encounter with him. Again, I love how the Bible, everything is right there. <laughs> and, and there's so much revealed in this passage. I encourage you when you have more time, go look at the whole chapter of Isaiah 52. But the first part, it was the announcement that there would be one coming. But then there's actually a song. They would actually put music to this. Isaiah has four to five, some people believe four, but five musical songs that, that were written and they wrote them in songs so that people would remember, which sounds like the 1800s when there was a message of go tell it on the mountain that they wanted passed down. And it was very sa same thing that God gave them a song. Now, if you'll look in your, when you see in your Bibles, it's actually written where it's paragraph form, what I just read to you, but then uh, what we looked at together, but then you'll begin to see it written down like music is charted out. And that's that's the historical significance in the, in the context. And so this is the song. Who are we talking about? We know who brought the good news. His name is what? Jesus. He is the one that we are telling about. He is the one that we can know intimately about. But I want to show it to you right in the scripture. Isaiah 52, we look just a few verses uh, below. It says, indeed, my servant, the Messiah. Servant there in your Bible is, is capitalized. It's the servant. Jesus, the Messiah, will act wisely and prosperous. He will be raised and lifted up and greatly exalted. Okay, now listen. He will be greatly praised and exalted. We know heaven is praising God. All of the angels are gathered around the throne singing what? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. They're praising. Praise was now birthed in the earth because now people had a reason to praise because redemption had come. It says that in this passage, the Messiah will come over the mountain and now he will be exalted. He's not talking about heaven exalting him. Who's he talking about now is exalting him? The people, us, you and I now were given a praise. Now this will help you for the rest of the day. Praise was not God's gift to us to boost his ego. Praise is God's gift to put in our mouth for us and the benefit of us to see from a place that we could not see without it. You see what I'm having? We'll see what's happening here. This was something uh, stirred inside of us. It says that they erupted in joyful exclamation. Do you know what that is? Praise. They began to sing a song. They began to have something to say because they had experienced something personally. If you try to praise or try to stir something up without actually experiencing him, that's a lot of work. Because you've got to support it with, you're not supporting it with revelation, you're supporting it with information. If praising God is just because it's a command and it's not, then no, no, listen, sometimes you, I don't care if you feel it or understand it, you've got to obey because God said it. But to sustain that, you need a relationship with the word and relationship with the power of truth. And what I want to help you understand is praise is not what Christians do, praise is who Christians are. You get, what, you get that? Because praise now is helping me understand the song of God that he has placed in my heart. Look at, look at how David, he received the song in his heart. Psalm 40, one through two, he said, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry. Anybody been there? Do you remember when you needed help and just listen, you didn't have to fix your stuff. You didn't have to get your junk out. You didn't have to clean yourself up. All you had to do was look to the Lord and cry out for help. And then whoosh, he showed up on the scene to rescue you and deliver you. You remember that? David describes what it was like beforehand. He said, he lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground. This is so cool. He didn't just clean me up. He didn't just forgive me. He transplanted me into a new place to stand in righteousness in him. That'll preach all on its own. 
He set my feet on solid ground. He steadied me as I walked along. Now, I want us to picture this. What is the best way to steady someone who is wobbly? Now, you can, to, yeah, to, to hold them, to come, to guide them, to direct them. Uh, good, you got the answer. That's awesome. But, but think about some of the ways that we try to do this. If you'll give me a list of one through six, the best ways not to wobble. It's the list of not for non-wobblers. Step one, stand up. Some of us struggle with that one. Get out of bed. It's a struggle. I know we're laughing, but I'm serious. Uh, put one foot in front of the other. Uh, balance. Use your hobbit feet to stand your ground. But we look for a list of to-dos. If I do all of this, then I'll stand firmly. That's one way. Another way is to have somebody shouting at you how you need to be walking. That's religion. And we don't need to always look at the voices that are shouting to us. We need to think about the voice inside of us that's shouting at us. Well, you need to be better. Well, if you knew better, you'd do better. You know, like all those voices. Yeah, I hear them too. Well, you're not, you're not, you're not. And then you just say, you're right, I'm not, but he is. And, and so, so religion, that thing of, well, this is just a shout of, if you'll, if you'll do this, if you'll do that, if you'll, if you'll get this, if you'll fix that, if you'll, if you'll do this. And here's the deal. If we could have done all of that by just hearing a list of rules or hearing something shouted at us, we would do it. But that was not enough. So God got into our business by sending Jesus and he didn't just send a message or send a to-do list. He sent a person. And that person is Jesus. And the greatest way to stable somebody who is wobbly is to walk next to someone who is not. Nicholas, will you help me? I seen this in the first service. It's like, if, if, if I asked you, were you, what would happen if he just said no? Like, No. And you wouldn't do that, would you? No, exactly. <laughs> so, so not everybody in the room needs this image, but some of you do. Some of you are, hey, I'm, I'm fine. I get that. Move on to point two. But the Holy Spirit would not let me move on to point two. Some of you, this is why you're at church today. Some of you watching online, this is why you tuned in today. God had an appointment with you and you need to leave today. You need to turn, the, to, you know, turn it off and you guys need to walk out today. Get your Rice Krispie treat. But beyond that, walk out today with this truth etched in your mind. You and I, he couldn't, God didn't shout from heaven when we were laying down in the mire and the clay and tell us to get up. Because if, if that would have worked, that's what he would have done. Just get up. Just walk. If you just get up. But, but he, did, he didn't do that. He didn't shout from heaven. He came from heaven. And, and, and then when you and I, we, we try to get up on our own, and then what happens every single time? We fall back down. It's not, it's not gravity as in science. It's the gravity of sin. It's the gravity of this world. It's the culture that we're living in that we cannot walk victorious in this life without having one who came from heaven not to shout commands at us, but to walk right next to us and to pick us up. And then... When I get wobbly, guess who's my support system? Not my spouse, not my job, not my bank account, not my health, not my tall, handsome, good looks. <laughs> Thought it was funny that Nicholas could stand on the floor and be as tall as I am standing on the platform. <laughs> so tall and good looking. <laughs> but, but none of that stuff. Because as long, you've been there and I've been there, as long as we start leaning on that stuff, then, then all of a sudden we start getting wobbly. We may look good for a while, but we are wobbling, we're wobbling, wobbling, wobbling. Well, if I can just get a man, if I can just get a woman, if I can just get some money, if I can just get a burger. I mean, sometimes it's a burger to make us through. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if I can just get this thing, if I can meet my goals, if I can just show up at church three, you know, three weeks in a row, whatever it may be, sometimes even religious, but we think that that's what brings us stability. But it's not. It's Jesus, the message who came to be face to face. He was 
was over there on that mountain. But he came over the mountain and through the woods, and not to grandma's house, but to your house, to my house, and to walk next to us, to stable my feet, to give me strength, to give me someone to lean on. And sometimes, not everybody needs this, but somebody needs to see this today. He will pick you up and he will carry you through the darkest times in your life. Everywhere, every mountain, every valley, sometimes we just need somebody to pick us up. Well, no, 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 no. I, I can walk on my own. Keep trying that. Keep trying to walk on your own through your marriage. Whew. There is something about trying to walk through this life on your own, and there is just something about being held by the one who loves you, who your rescuer came over the mountain. And listen, if he got you through the addiction, he'll get you through Monday. If he got you this job, he'll get you the next job. The little things that we start doubting the one who just, this is all he wants. He just wants to walk next to us. He just wants to be our friend. He just wants to be the one who is close so that the watchman on the wall, you're not looking for answers anymore. You found the answer and you see him face to face. And when you need to be carried, he carries you. And when he says, all right, all right, buddy, it's time to put two feet on the ground. He never leaves you nor forsakes you, but he does require that you use what he gives you. And he'll say, hey, I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to talk with you. I'm, let's walk. We're going we're gonna to go over here, and then we're going to go over here. And then, so, you know, if you're like me, you start thinking, oh, I can, I can kind of do this. I can kind of do this. Jesus, I want to keep you close, but I, but I got this. And then all of a sudden, what happens? Whew, I'm getting a little intoxicated. By the culture, I'm getting a little intoxicated by my own thoughts, getting a little intoxicated by, by the circumstances that I'm in. And he just comes right over and he says, remember that mountain that I crossed for you? That was to be with you, not to shout at you. I came to be with you to walk through every valley and every mountain. And some of you today are thinking that you've got to get to the mountain to see him when he crossed over the mountain to see you. Religion will tell you when you get to the mountain, you will see him. But, but grace says he surpassed and went over the mountain to get to where you were because we couldn't get to him. And there is no shame in being carried by the Lord. There's no shame. Well, I'm, I'm too weak. Man, when I am weak, he is strong. And maybe, maybe we're supposed to be growing to be more dependent on him instead of less dependent. Maybe we're supposed to be, in, in, in our walk with the Lord, we're supposed to be walking closer with Jesus, not self-dependent in our own ability. Dude, there's some questions in this world right now that we need Jesus to be walking close to us. We need to be close enough to hear his whisper. Young people, you are walking, that's all of us. If you're a young person, yeah. Man, teenagers, young adults, and the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus comes to walk beside you in relationship. And he doesn't just have a message of life. He is life. And as you fall more in love with him, some of you today, there is such a gap between where you are and where you want to be. And, and, and you hadn't been doing it right. Today, just look to Jesus. Just begin walking with him. And I promise he'll show you where you need to go. There's things you ought to have done different. There's not one of us in this room. There's not one of you watching online that we wish there were things we had done different. But we didn't do everything right, but Jesus did. And he came to walk with us. Amen. Thank you, Nicholas. Give him a hand. Thank you. So now David says, he has given me a new song. So he didn't just carry me and lift me up. He put something in my heart. He has given me a song of praise, which brings us to this next place. You, you can't just receive the song. Now you've got to protect that thing. You have got to protect the song of praise that he placed in your heart. If you're not careful, subtly this thing can be forgotten. And I, and I want you to think about it in, in terms of a playlist. Have, there is a song that you you. If you repeat the song and you hear it enough, it just becomes a part of who you are. To, to bring up Nicholas again, he, he, he is so funny. We have this kind of on, on, uh, ongoing joke and laugh because he loves worship music. And there are lines of a worship song that he just sings out of his heart. He doesn't even know he's doing it. It's not like he thinks, hey, I'm going to sing this song. He just starts singing it. 
And I think it's, it's such a beautiful thing. Sometimes it gets on my nerves. But because but, but, I'm like, dude, do you even know you're singing that? And he's like, what? And I'm like, yeah, you're saying that. There's more to the song than that one line, you know? And, and, and then I uh, conferred with Cassidy, and she said he does it at home too. So, um, uh, but, but it's so beautiful because that's what happens when there has been a song birthed in your heart. Part of protecting it is use it or you're going to lose it. And I don't mean that God, like he'll never leave us nor forsake us. Like he is right there. We just described how he walks next to us. But if you don't use the power of praise that he's placed in your heart, then things will come in and cloud your judgment. Suddenly you're going to start singing the world's song. We all, all of a sudden will become parrots instead of prophets. We'll start repeating everything that we see around us instead of practicing. So the number one thing to protect the song in your heart is you got to practice it. They tell you this with exercise. If you don't use it, you're going to lose it. So part of spirit, the spiritual exercise of practicing the song that he placed in, in our hearts. David describes his life. He says, my heart is steadfast. That is not automatic. That's intentional. And I want to show you this. It was a decision that David made to praise. Every time he made the decision to praise. Psalm 34, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The word continual, the, the uh, continual means occurring repeatedly, so frequent as to seem endless or uninterrupted. Now break down this English word will, our mind, will, and emotions. He said, I am willing I am choosing to bless the Lord at all times. So if I find myself in the mountain, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna bless the Lord. If I find myself on the mountain, I'm gonna bless the Lord. I now, because of Jesus and his message to me and who he is, because his song is my, in my heart, I will bless the Lord at all times. My circumstances will not determine my praise. My praise will determine my circumstances. Because praise is not circumstantial. Because praise isn't based on, it can be, but it shouldn't be because praise is not based on what's happening around me. Praise is a result of what's happening in me. And if he is the redeemed, if he is the Lord, if he is walking next to me, remember he didn't say you're not gonna go through the fire. He just said, you're gonna go through it. He didn't say you're not gonna have floods. He just said, you're gonna go through it. Why? Because he is with you. He is birth a song of praise. And so David made the choice. I will praise the Lord at all times. That you and I choose that we make a decision every time that we're going to praise. We're going to be intentional about praising the Lord. Those of you who use playlists and you build one, uh, maybe you have, you know, 10 or 12 songs on it or, or, or whatever. And then you ever had your playlist run out and Siri or, or Apple or whatever those weird ghosts are in our electronics, they pick a song for you. Oh, that's only happened to a few of us. So, so it will pick a song based on, we don't know what it's based on, but... But man, we've had a playlist playing before and then all of a sudden some song starts playing and I'm like, where did that come from? Potty mouth. People singing about all kinds of stuff and, and the kids look at me like, dad, what you been listening to? You know, dad, what's that song right there? And I'm like, how do you know it and they're singing it? You know, so, no, just kidding. But, but that's what happens and they're, you know, they're, they're songs that are not, not what I intentionally put on there. Here's my point. If you don't intentionally pick the songs on your playlist, they'll be picked for you. And you'll be singing songs that are not the song of the redeemed. They're songs of your circumstances. You know, you can be sick and be in of receiving your healing, but not sing the song of sickness. You can have financial challenges, but you, that doesn't have to become your song. You can, and, and, and here's the deal. You're saying, well, I just need to ignore that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling in my relationship or I'm having an issue right here. No, I'm not saying ignore it. I'm just saying it doesn't, it doesn't have the right to steal your praise. Don't let it come take hostage your praise and start writing a different song because there is one who paid the price. He came over the mountain to give you the good news, the, the, the news that you are now redeemed, that now he's placed a new song. And so how could David, listen, David has some mountaintop experiences and some valley experiences, but David says, I will, I will choose. And then we've got to build it. So you've got to practice it, but build it. Begin to build your praise on what? 
not your circumstances. Some of us today, when it comes to praise, we go, I just don't really have a reason to praise God. What? Have you opened your Bible? Because that's what we use to build our praise. There is not anything right now you are facing in your life that you can't find a scriptural context that will bring life, that will bring healing, that will bring correction sometimes. If we'll learn to receive it, it'll help us grow. But to receive the word of the Lord right on time. Some of us over-spiritualize this. We go, I just need a word from the Lord today. Open your Bible. There it is. The living, breathing word of God. And you can bank on it. You can build your life on it. You cannot build your life on the, on the economy. You cannot build your life on relationships. Relationships are a result of the life in you. They are not something to build your life on. You cannot build your life on a great marriage. You have a great marriage because the life giver lives inside of you. You can't build your life on, well, if I feel okay. Too many of us are going around saying, well, I'm gonna build my praise based on my feelings. But I wanna read it the way I wrote it. This will, this will bring some freedom in the way that we think. We can fill ourselves into a new way of acting or we can praise ourselves into a new way of feeling. Do you think every time David says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise will continually be on my lips. Do you think that he was always feeling it? And we a lot of times wait to feel it before we believe it. But what if we learned how to believe it even when we didn't feel it? Because there are promises that God has released to us and he's just looking for somebody to sing their song. At our house, we like the voice competition. It's a singing competition. And there's a judge on there named John Legend and he gets really excited when there's certain, uh, his artists or somebody that's doing it, he just gets up and he has these moves, you know, that he starts doing and he goes, sing that song. And as I was getting ready for this message, I just felt like the Holy Spirit just said, church, sing that song. Sing your song. You better, you, and that's what he goes, you, you better sing that song. No matter where you are. Well, I will whenever, no. Nah. No matter where you find yourself today, you better sing that song. Protect that thing inside of you. The passage goes on in Isaiah 52. It goes on to, to say what this Messiah came to do. And I think this is such a powerful statement. He says, will you, will you put that up there? Yeah, you did already. Isaiah, he says, so he will sprinkle many nations with his blood, providing salvation, kings, will shut their mouths because of him. For what they had not been told, they will see, and what they had heard, they not heard, they will understand. Here's what he did. Every, every rogue song that tries to be a part of your playlist, you know what he did? He shut the, he, he removed it from, your, from the playlist and he shut the mouths of the king. He shut the mouths of the enemy. Anybody glad that he shut the mouth of your past? He shut the mouth of, Iniquity? Did he shut the mouth of religion? Some of us grew up in such strict religious that it, it, just, it just pushed the relationship right out of it. But aren't you glad that he, he, he shut the mouth of that king? Some of us generationally, we saw in our families that, that there were generational things broken, that, that we're, we're not, you and your kids, you're not walking in the things generationally that have been passed down generationally. He shut the mouth of that king. But here's what happens. We'll go press the plus sign and add a song that he shut the mouth of. He removed it, but then we go, we ask that thing or that voice, what do you think? Well, what, what about this? What about that? And if we're not careful, that thing, we're not protecting the song of the Lord in us. We're compromising the song of the Lord in our hearts because we're inviting voices that he shut the mouth of. And part of what this victor did over coming over the mountain, didn't just bring a message, he brought himself and that his authority, his name, the name of Jesus, shut the mouth of the enemy. Here's, look, can we just have it make an agreement today? We're gonna, we're gonna allow the enemy, the, the mouths of the enemies that he shut, we're just gonna leave them alone and shut it. We're just, we're just gonna let what he did ring true in our lives. We're gonna protect the song of the Lord in our hearts. And then finally, if we're gonna receive the song of the Lord to us, we're gonna protect the song of the Lord in us, then now he can proclaim the song of the Lord through us. Now we can go and tell. 
And I want, to, I want you to, to look at this in a, in a deeper way. You and I were those watchmen on the wall waiting for a messenger. But now do you realize there are people all around us that are still standing on the wall waiting on the message of hope, the good news. They're waiting on what you and I have received. They're waiting. They're looking in anticipation. They're, they're waiting for redemption. They're waiting on salvation. And the New Testament is full of the birth of the church. It talks about the, 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 really the, the heart of believers that now that Jesus has come to us, it should be lived out in a way through us. And one of my favorite scriptures in, is in uh, Peter. And, and Peter tells the, the group of people, the early church, he says, you are God's chosen treasure. You are priests who are kings, a spiritual nation, and you've been set apart as God's devoted ones. That's you and I. We were once watchmen and now we're not looking anymore because he has come to us. But then he says, he called you out of darkness to experience the marvelous light. And now he claims you as his very own. He did this so that you would broadcast his glorious wonders throughout the world. Well, broadcast what? Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. That what people are looking for, there is an answer and his name is Jesus that there is an eternal answer to an eternal problem, but there is also a Monday answer to a Monday problem. And that he is the one who comes and wants to walk right next to them. At Christmas time, religiously, there are so many people that are, that are looking to Jesus, singing songs. There are gonna be people that show up at different Christmas programs and things like that out of a religious duty. You know, one of the things that you can broadcast this Christmas is how they can have a personal relationship with Jesus every day. That it's not just a Christmas thing, it's an everyday thing. That he wants to be very personal with them. And, and you know, I know this is kind of funny, you know, that, that we think about go tell it on the mountain. Does that mean I need to walk into school this week shouting, go tell it on the mountain? Maybe. <laughs> do I need to, do I, you know, it's kind of like karaoke. Do I need the words of the song and then I just need to sing that song? I, just, just sing your song. Just sing the song that he's placed in you. Think about your family. Think about the people that you work with, circumstances and places that he has already placed you just to sing your song. And as you do, here's what's so beautiful. You know, who become the precious feet of the one who brings good news? You. How precious are your feet, even the hobbit feet. But how precious are your feet that are carriers of hope, of love, of good news, of healing. And I am so grateful for John Wesley Works who published this song so that you and I could sing it today. But I am so thankful. Aren't you so thankful for Jesus? that went over every mountain and every valley to close the distance between us and God. He's worth telling about because we walk with him every day. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes? Will you just take a moment right there where you are, if you're watching online, if you're in the house, will you just ask the Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me today? What are you speaking to me today? You know, all parts of the service are, are important and God is speaking, but this is a moment for the next couple of minutes here for us to respond in him. And I think it's so important because it's, it's really, we're deciding what we're going to walk out of here today with. And the Bible says that his presence and his word transforms us. But in this moment, we're going to respond and turn to him. And so whether maybe today you have never sang this song in your heart and it's time, and we're going to give you the opportunity to do that. Maybe you have allowed some other songs unintentionally to be sang and it's, it's, it's all of a sudden become your song. It's what you're listening to. And it could be the song of this world. It could be the, the song of the past. It could be the voice of kings that he silenced. And today you, it's time to put a guard back over your heart to protect the song of the Lord inside of you. And then may all of us leave today with a greater conviction and devotion to sing our song. Just like John Legend say, but you better sing your song. He's got something for you to tell. He's got, there are people around you, strategically around you, looking as watchmen on the wall, looking for a message. And you are that message. So Lord, we just come to you in this moment. We respond in faith. We ask you, Holy Spirit, would you come and demonstrate your word with power, transformation. God, let it today not just be information that we've heard, 
God, let it be revelation that we live. You let it be real inside of us today. Praying right now for the person that needs to trust you with their life. I'm praying for the person that that feels like you've been distant and God, that they would leave today with that image of you carrying them, of you being the one who steadies them. God, we look to you today. We cry out to you today. We choose to bless you, Lord, at all times for the person on the mountain, for the person in the valley. Today, we all set our eyes and set our hearts on you. With your hearts or your heads bowed and your eyes closed, I just wanna ask you the most important question that you'll ever answer. Do you need to meet Jesus today? for the first time, or do you need to recommit your life to him, to reconnect in a relationship with him? The Bible says that when you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, that that's where salvation comes. And so I'm just gonna ask you a very simple, but but significant and important question. Do you need to believe in him for the very first time? The Bible says that that's how we get to heaven. It says that that's how we begin a relationship with him. And it's the only way. And if you know there is something missing inside and you're ready to surrender to him today, I'd be so honored to pray with you. We're not gonna embarrass you or call you out. We're we're not gonna make you sing a song or come up here or anything like that. This is a private moment between you and the Lord. But I just wanna know that I'm praying with you. If that's you, would you just be so bold, slip your hand up and put it right back down. Today, you're ready to say yes to Jesus. Way to go, young man, way to go, young lady. Way to go, way to go, I see you. Once you put it up, you can put it right back down. Anybody, you need a fresh start today. You wanna be included in this prayer, ready to recommit your life to him. Man, what a great, a fresh start at Christmas. What a great time to say yes to him. If you're watching online, you can be a part of this prayer. I wanna encourage you that right where you are, put your trust in Jesus, believe in him. The Bible says you'll be saved. I'm gonna give you some words to say. You just say this with all of your heart. You can say it in your heart to him. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending Jesus. Jesus, I believe that you're real. I really believe that you are the messenger from heaven, that you came over the mountain of sin and sickness and and selfishness and all that separated me from you. And so today, would you birth salvation in my heart? Would you save me? Would you deliver me? Would you come be the Lord of my life? Thank you that you forgive me of all of my sin. Thank you that one day I will see you face to face in a a place called heaven for eternity. And and thank you that you are walking with me in this life, that there's not a moment that I have to walk alone, that you are right here with me to support me, to guide me, to direct me, to carry me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being my savior. Holy Spirit, will you come be my very best friend? Will you seal this decision in my heart that I am his, that I belong to Jesus? In your name I pray, amen.